Good morning, guys. It is 6.06 a.m. If this is your first time here, consider subscribing because I come out with creativity and technology videos. In this video, I'm going to talk about how I created the thumbnail for this video in DaVinci Resolve. But first, I need to record a thumbnail clip. Let's do this. That part was just for fun. All right, cool. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is drag my background image in. This is a screenshot that I had taken earlier. And I'm gonna drag a lens blur on this. Now you can also use Gaussian blur. Lens blur is something that's only available in the studio version. So that's something to consider. The background's not gonna be super important anyways. So switching over to the color tab, I'm going to be dropping down the curves a bit. You don't want the background to be the main focal point. It's just there to add some texture to the image. You don't want a busy background. You want it to be very simple. So what I'm doing now is just playing with the yaw a little bit to give it a bit of perspective, make it a little bit interesting. And I'm zooming in because there's no data in those black points right there. Cool, so switching over to the color tab, I'm gonna co color correct this image. The reason is because I shot it in Cineform Technicolor on my M50, so it's a very flat profile. I'm just adding a couple of nodes right now to get prepared and organizing my node tree. Now, I'm gonna drag over the Canon LUT. This is gonna do a lot of the heavy lifting for me. And I'm just gonna adjust these primaries real quick to make sure that I have the colors on point. For some reason, my pop-up windows are not showing. So right now I'm, I'm looking at my scopes. I'm gonna detail everything with titles on the screen to be able to help you guys out. So now I'm just adding some noise reduction to this. Noise reduction is something that's only available in the studio version. You don't need to use it, especially because you're gonna be shrinking the image, but it's just something that I'm used to in my workflow. Now it's time to isolate me from the background and everything else that's going on. So I'm adding an extra node here and I'm trying to qualify the colors. This is something that you're gonna have to play with a little bit. DaVinci Resolve is really good at qualifying and tracking, but because this is a still image, we don't have to track anything, which is great. Now I'm um, adding an alpha output. So when you right click in the empty space and you click add alpha output, it's gonna add that little blue box. And then you just have to connect the blue boxes together. This is gonna allow you to get rid of everything that you just qualified out. So that way the background will come back in. And now I'm just masking myself out. This is gonna do a lot of the extra work of cutting everything out. So I don't have to focus as much on qualifying the colors. Even with noise reduction, my background is still kind of noisy. So it's causing all these extra colors to go in there. So while I'm trying to isolate this, I'm just playing with the luminance a little bit and then the saturation. And I'm just gonna reduce the width for the hue, eliminate some of the colors in there. I'm just going to reduce my in out ratio to cut out some of that aura that's around me. And so that looks pretty good. So going back to my primaries, I'm just playing with the saturation just a little bit. Now that everything's looking really good, it's time to create the text. So switching back to the edit tab, I'm adding a fusion composition and I'm going to cut this down to one frame and then switch over to the fusion tab. In the fusion tab, I hit control space to add a text node. All you have to do is type in TXT once you do that, hit enter. And then I'm gonna play with the text a little bit and increase the size, hit control space again and type BG, hit enter, and that's gonna create a background for you. Again, control space and type in rec. We're adding a rectangle so that way we can create a nice background for the text itself. Now just cutting down the rectangle to make sure it fits around the text so we don't need it to take up the entire screen. 
adding a transform node. Now I'm going to be creating a copy of this. So you just have to select the entire node, hit control C, hit control V. I'm sliding it over so that way it's staying organized. Connecting the two will create a merge node so that way they're together. Hit control space, type in transform. That's going to add another transform node. Now I'm going to move the bottom text down and change the text thumbnails. Next, I'm going to increase the size of the rectangle so that way the text isn't overlapping and increase the size of that second text. Again, adjust the rectangle. Now I'm changing the background color. I think red pops a lot more, especially over the background that we have. Now I'm just reversing the colors for the first text. This is just going to pop off of the background that I have. Now I'm just sliding over the text to the left side because I'm taking up the right side and I'm going to rotate the top text just a little bit and move it around to make sure that it's all set. On the merge node, hit control T to invert to make sure that the create is on top of the thumbnails. The reason why you want the text on the left side is because the timestamp on the lower right hand corner is going to clip some of the text. Next, I'm adding a drop shadow to this to make it stand out even more. And I'm dragging in the DaVinci Resolve logo. Now I'm just adjusting the text because what I want to do is put the DaVinci Resolve logo right underneath there. So dragging the output from the image to the merge node is going to create another merge node and connect them together. I'm just organizing everything. I like to have a very clean environment. Hit control space to add a transform node and I'm reducing the size of the image. I don't need it to take up the entire real estate and I'm just gonna readjust it to the bottom left-hand corner. If you're gonna use words or text at all, you don't wanna use more than four words. Your thumbnail is not your title. You want it to grab attention, just do its job real quick. The idea is to get people to click on it. Now I'm just seeing how it looks on top of the image. I wanna make sure that everything is centered the best that it can be. And I'm just adding a drop shadow to the create to help it stand out from the thumbnails a bit. Now uh, let's see if this text is in the right spot. I'm going to move it a little bit to the right. It's a little bit too far to the right. So switching back to the Fusion tab, I'm just going to slide it a little bit to the left. All right, everything looks good. The text and the positioning. Now I'm just going to do some quick final touch-ups to really make this stand out. So focusing on my background first, I'm just going to create a vignette around myself to separate myself from the background, I'm gonna end up darkening the background. So I'm gonna create a power window right here, stretch it out, rotate it, and then soften it up. Let's see about right there. And then I'm gonna drag down my curves. So this is actually darkening right behind me. That's not what I want. So I'm actually going to invert that. Okay, switching to the outside. So to create the outside node, I hit Alt O bringing up my curves a bit to brighten it up right behind me. And now I'm just going to add some color to that section. Let's see what looks good here. I'm thinking maybe a blue. So I'm just going to soften up this vignette just a little bit more and rotate it right about there. Now switching to the middle layer, I'm going to add an extra node here and reduce the contrast. The LUT added a huge contrast, which helped me do the separation and keying to remove myself from the background. So I want to reduce that. It is a little, it is way too much contrast for me. Now I'm just going to bring the levels up just a bit to brighten myself. And I want to boost the saturation because this image needs to pop more. For thumbnails, you want to have high saturation. You want to increase your saturation quite a bit. That's going to make it stand out. Now I'm just decreasing the saturation for my reds because there's a lot of red in my skin. Adding another node with Alt S. I'm going to be sharpening myself up a bit. I like to set it around 46, 47. Add another node for film grain. Now again, this is an optional step and film grain is only available in the studio version. You don't need it. Again, it's just something I'm used to with, with my workflow. This is something that I actually got from Kazi and watching his videos on YouTube. And I'm dropping this down at 35 millimeter, 400T. Now, I just wanna see if I can get this halo around me down a little bit more. So I'm gonna play with my clean black, maybe denoise a little bit. And then back to my adjustments layer, I wanna increase the warmth just a little bit. Again, this is just to make me stand out and really make this image pop. Cool, so everything's looking good. Now it's time to export that clip. So I'm opening up my gallery, obviously, 
there's nothing in there right now. Um, go over to the image, right click on it and click grab still. That's gonna throw an image into that gallery. What I actually wanna do though is add a bit more saturation to this because I know once I export it, the saturation is gonna drop just a little bit. I'm gonna go up on that image, right click and click grab still. So now you're just gonna right click on that still, scroll down to export. When you click that, it's gonna pop up with a dialogue. Just select where you're gonna save it. Make sure that you save it as a JPEG. Our thumbnail is done now. Cool, so quick question for you. What are you using currently to make your thumbnails? Are you an artist? Are you already an expert at this? Did you learn anything? Go ahead and let me know down in the comments below. Don't forget to smash that like button and hit the subscribe button while you're at it because I'm coming out with new videos. Until next time, I'll catch you later.